Shut up and sit down. Welcome everybody to the Down Forward Punchcast, episode 22. I'm your host, Jason Saris, and joining me today is special guest and friend of the show, Scott Pogros. Or, as hey we like to call him, Scott the Destroyer. <laughs> right, How you doing, Scott? I'm doing good. How are you, Jason? I'm doing pretty well. All right. Thanks for uh, joining me today. You're welcome. Thanks for asking me on. Hey, anytime. Uh, so we're going to get into Gamescom, because we're just coming off of Gamescom week. Uh, got a couple of things we're going to talk about there. There's a lot of overlap between Gamescom and E3, so mm-hmm. I don't really think we're going to hit every point but there's some highlights i think we're talking and then later in the episode we're going to talk about some xbox one x because that was probably the at least in my opinion the main buzzworthy news from gamescom there was a couple things that microsoft announced there um before we get into any of that though uh, i want to remind everybody to like this video share it with your friends make sure to subscribe to the channel the last couple weeks we've had a significant um, increase in viewership and i can't thank you guys enough we appreciate the support Continue to do that. Continue to turn other people onto the channel. The more that you guys watch, the more it helps us get the resources and everything else to kind of put more stuff and content together for you. So please subscribe. Tell somebody else to subscribe and keep keep watching the videos. Okay. With that being said, Gamescom. Right. Did you check out Gamescom? Did you watch the whole thing or a part of it or anything? I didn't. I didn't watch too much stuff. Um, I did check some just media briefs on it, like here and there, looking at running down some games, looking at all the developers who were just. Uh, uh, kind of rehashing or just kind of going over some improvements they've made in some games or some other add-ons they're doing. So I didn't watch yeah. too much, but I, I kind of have caught the news here and there throughout the week. I feel like it's hard to watch the whole thing. Like, I think it's much easier to watch E3, and maybe it's because we have E3 kind of going into it. Yeah. That you feel like you're familiar with a lot of the stuff that, they, that they're that they talking about. Yeah. I think a lot of publishers use GameCon just as kind of like a more hands-on, start playing some of these things they revealed at e- at E3 rather than like big announcements like that we typically kind of yeah. you know, salivate over when E3 comes up. Xbox took a weird approach. Like Microsoft had like a weird like couch thing where they're all kind of hanging on the couch and talking about it. At least some of the, like EA and um, Blizzard and whatnot, they actually like did stage presentations which were more, you know, yeah. in, in that vein of I think like Microsoft, E3. They, they weren't even really there. They kind of just did like their little own off to the off on their own press conference and they really didn't have like a stage thing there was that what i read or uh or is it, it wasn't were they there or it they wasn't offside? yeah they were there it just wasn't a big stage so yeah, like okay. they had they had a big set and they had like three people sitting on a couch i think normally like major nelson's there but he mm-hmm. wasn't there this week or this year and they would just talk about things they would cut the trailers they'd do some interviews and most of it was the exact same like trailers and stuff that were happening in e3 some of it was a little different um, but if anybody doesn't know, Gamescom is a European conference. It takes place in Boulogne, in uh, Cologne, Germany, correct? Yeah. So you know, it's it's really Europe's kind of showcase where America has E3. Um, it's interesting because not all the same players participate in both. Mm-hmm. Like Microsoft makes a big deal about trying to show up at Gamescom, probably because they don't have a presence in Japan. So like Europe is their number two market where Sony, for whatever reason, doesn't really do anything at Gamescom, but they have their own PlayStation event that they do throughout the year. So um, you have some overlap with some different things, and um, yeah. So um, one of the things we got a chance to see was some new uh, Assassin's Creed footage. Now, Scott, I know that you used to be into Assassin's Creed until it started to sour for you a bit. Yeah, I kind of, um, I played, I it took me a little bit, but I got back into Assassin's Creed 2, and I really loved it, and I loved that whole storyline with, with Desmond. And then after that, I've kind of like, it kind of felt like I was just picking up different, like, pieces. And I kind of like that that overarching story between 1, 2, and 3. And then mm-hmm. when they just started doing these more episodic things and kind of got out of that whole timeline with, with Desmond and his family and ancestors, it kind of felt like I lost a little bit. Sure. Um, but I've, like, kept up on it, and so, like, uh, Assassin's Creed Origin now I know like they dropped a new some more gameplay a new cinematic trailer are you looking forward to this one um I'm just, I'll take a look at it it's it's something that like I'm I'd be like I'll look at but I'm not like too like excited about it like I'm interested but it's kind of like maybe like just measured anticipation like it looks cool if it's something I you know that piques my interest maybe I'll go you know pick it up and give it a try I mean the visuals on this one look amazing yeah and, and I think as you mentioned there was a new trailer that dropped for it and it looks just incredible. 
I did not play Assassin's Creed until three. I played a little bit of three, which was three Black Flag, or was that four? That was, I think that was the fourth one. Okay. Fourth one. So it might have been four then. So Black Flag is the one that I played. Um, I, I didn't get through all of it, but I liked it enough, And I, but it took me finding it as like a $7 deal to mm-hmm. actually get into it. This is the first Assassin's Creed that I'm like, I may need to like buy this at retail price like right away because it looks it looks pretty amazing to right. me. I guess it's one of those it's one of those franchises where it's kind of going I don't want to like compare it to Call of Duty in that aspect, but the gameplay can kind of get some repetitive sometimes. And so for games like that, it really for me if the story is very interesting, and engaging and, you know, being that I partially studied history, you know, in college, if that story draws me in, there's some relevant, like, not crazy historical references, which the Assassin's Creed series is pretty good about keeping factual history woven in with the lore of the game. Yeah. I'll probably be interested in it. I like I like the setting for this one, too. I like that they're going to Egypt. I think that that's an interesting direction to take Assassin's Creed to. Right. Um, and this is kind of like the beginning of, like, the whole Assassin's sect versus it's the... It's the origin, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the, hence the name. Uh, we got to see some new stuff from PUBG. Uh, have you played PUBG at all? No, I don't have a PC, but I know like, I'm kind of excited to see it come to Xbox and it, and uh, play it because it's been something that's very uh, um, fun to watch on um, Twitch and see that. But um, with not having a PC, I haven't been able to play it, but I know it's a very popular for streamers. looks like a lot of people like playing it on PC. So once that comes into Xbox, I'll probably definitely give it a try. Oh, and Dave is joining us. I was hiding under the table. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, good. Well, welcome. You just started talking about something that I found interesting, so I figured I'd pop up. Well, I, I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> have you played PUBG? Uh, yeah, I own it. It's uh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is. It's just fine. Okay. I don't really. I, I know a lot of people out there like it, but I'm still struggling to figure out why this game is so popular. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, everybody, it's the bee's knees, apparently. Do you want to know what it is? You literally parachute out of a plane with 100 other people. 99 other people. Uh, you scavenge for armor and items and guns, and then you die. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's literally it. So half, okay. the, half the game is just scavenging buildings for stuff, all right? And it has somewhat of a clunky interface, so it's not the easiest thing to, like, you know, do. It's like you'd be walking into a house, it's like, oh, there's a kitchen. It's like, and an AK-47 on the ground. <laughs> and a, a scope for it. Sweet. But all the stuff is random, and, like, various things have levels and stuff. So, like, you can get armor that's level 1, 2, and 3. So, obviously, the better armor level, sure. you know, the more less damage you take. And then, like, this, like, blue circle. Do you know about the blue circle? No. I've never played it. I know oh, nothing okay, so about it. I, I mean, I've seen some footage and gameplay, but I haven't seen I've got to tell you about this if you don't really know much about it. It's really great. So it, what what keeps the game moving and constantly, like, getting people to fight each other and stuff is that when the game starts, you basically find, like, this... There's, like, a spawn point kind of area, right? And everyone just kind of parachutes wherever they want. And then at some point, like, this game circle appears, like, this little thing on the outside. And it's like, if you're not in the circle, by the time the electrical blue field like shrinks into the where the circle is you basically just start taking residual damage from it (laughs) so what happens is then every like two three minutes the circle gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and this blue field just keeps shrinking and shrinking and shrinking but as long as you're in the circle you're okay if you're outside of it so it's basically forcing you to go from a bigger map to a more close quarters map and that's cool it's really neat that's how the game continues to 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 flow like in other words if it was just like this enormous map and people are all over the place no one would ever find each other it would take 30 years um but you pretty much just run around collect art garbage and then you just get killed and like in a field somewhere and that's really all it is if you jump into a jeep people are just waiting for you and they're just like <laughs> blown you away and then you're like cool i spent 30 minutes collecting stuff just to die and never get to use any of the stuff i just collected well they're apparently doing something right because everybody's very excited about this game coming to xbox and when, oh and when you win it's it literally on screen says winner winner chicken dinner yeah i have yes. heard that yeah. yeah they were actually talking at gamescom they were asking the developer uh why they picked winner winner chicken dinner and he was talking about how he was like obsessed with vegas when he was younger and he, when the first time he was playing cards or somebody was playing cards and they yeah, you know, the guy won, and he's like, winner, winner, chicken. Or, or was Play maybe... Blackjack. It was, yeah, it was Blackjack, but maybe it was from actually watching... Um, Rounders? Rounders. I think it was when he was watching Rounders. <laughs> okay. They did that, and he was like, that's great. That's going to be the end of my... Rounders you are know. 21. Like, yeah. I think it was the other one. Like, he was, remember, he was very excited about it, so... That's hilarious. I don't know. It's... I don't know why the game is so popular, but whatever. It's fine. I mean, I, I've had it. I've played it maybe seven times, just because I'm just like, I have better things to do. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I'll try it out, especially if it's going to be a preview program. I mean, why not? Yeah, you yeah. should try it. I think you might enjoy it. I mean, you're going to find that it's got, like, this Hunger Games vibe to it, right? Or, like, if you've ever seen the movie Battle Royale, which is really where this concept kind of came from. Yeah, the Japanese one. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, hey, we just kidnapped a bunch of high school students. We put them in a bus and took them to an island. Now they have to kill each other. <laughs> That's what the movie is. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah well, I've but, seen it. Yeah, it's insane. And it has a sequel. It does. You're right. It does have a sequel. And then The Hunger Games was like, here's the American version of it. Yeah. But with more story or something and less killing. So, I don't know. PUBG's fine. Whatever. We also got to see uh, a new Jurassic Park game coming out, which is basically like a Sim City, where you get to create the Jurassic Park park and all that other thing. And I know that they did this once a long time ago. There was a, a, a like a simulation builder, like years and years ago. I want to say it was like SNES or I feel like I know what you're something. talking about. Yeah. But I'm surprised that it's taken this long to do it again. It actually looks really good. Well, Jurassic Park kind of fell out of popularity for a long time, and the look, look, look. The, to be honest, the second and third movie didn't help. The All second right? movie I thought was okay. The third movie yeah. is really bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, hey, Jurassic Park is this really great thing? Here's but as some much as people like simulation no builders, care. you would think that somebody was like, you know what, the movies aren't doing well, but who doesn't love dinosaurs? Well, the only good Jurassic Park game was Genesis. Yes. Where you played as the raptor. <laughs> yes. The fact that you had to play as the raptor. Because the Super Nintendo one is entirely different and stupid. Is that That's not the same one that was on Sega CD, right? No, that no. one was also cool. That one was oh, yeah, so the first bad. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, it was like FMV video. I could, ne I could never beat it. it you know why? Real tough. Because the game was so broken. Every time I would play that game, you would get to like one, there was like one of three spots that whenever you got there, it would just stop working. Like the disc would not load correctly, and then you couldn't go any further, and they I, had to restart. And I hopefully, couldn't kill the damn Dilophosaurus. You should have gotten <laughs> I it couldn't digitally. Kill him. On, you on wouldn't have this problem. On Sega CD. <laughs> sure, why not? CD. Okay. <laughs> um, it's made by the people who did Zoo, Zoo Tycoon, I believe. Okay. And okay. if you've played that, that's a pretty good park simulator. It's you know, it's like their thing. Yeah, it's a it's park a simulator. <laughs> uh, EA showed us the new FIFA, which you know. Again, I'm not into soccer, but if I was, this would be the soccer game to play because it actually looks like they're building a pretty interesting story. How do you know it's it? not Pro Evolution is the game to play? Why are you going to make such outlandish judgment calls <laughs> like that? What if Pro Evolution is better? And it is. It, it could be. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I've never played it. I, are. Heard, I hear it's good. Okay. Pro Evolution. There you go. Boycott FIFA. You heard it here first. Nobody likes FIFA. Nobody likes EA. Just go Pro Evolution. <laughs> Support Konami uh, and their bad Metal Gear remakes. All right, so we have to take a moment to talk about Battlefront 2. Yes. I mean... Um, Star Wars Battlefront. You were into Battlefront 1, correct? Did you play it? Or you... I didn't play this one. I played the I played the original one back on... What was it? Like PS2. PS2. T PS2. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Xbox, I believe, yeah. Yeah, this was a long time ago. I actually had a PlayStation before. I saw the light and bought my Xbox. <laughs> so late. And now the light is no. dimming and the PlayStation <laughs> light is growing again. No. I know. Um... I saw some. Uh, I, it was some YouTuber I just like uh, randomly found. They were showing the uh, the space battle pre-alpha footage. I think they had that was playable at Gamescom. It looks amazing. Yeah. Um, it visually looks amazing. The the play style looks amazing. The ability that you're using like hero ships from all three genres, like the the original trilogy, the prequels, and the the sequels that are currently in production now. Like it, it looks really awesome. Yeah. I would say that Seth Infiltrator that um, Darth Maul has, it, that it is sweet. entirely OP right now. I'm like, EA, please nerf, because that thing is like taking down the Corvette shield. Did you see like, this? It's no. It's ridiculous. So Darth Maul's spaceship can go invisible and just wreck everybody. Cool. Of like, why can. wouldn't you want to be that? Like, it looks, it looks awesome. It depends. You have to and find it's... the magic coin on the map to get it, though. <laughs> because, you know... Why make spawn points with vehicles when yeah, you can have I mean, magic coins on the map? I do wonder how they're going to approach that this time around. I swear to God, if that's how they do it... It looked like he was I'm just flying not, in. You would select your ship and you would just fly into the battle That space. is how Battlefield 1 does it, and it's brilliant. That's what it, that's what it was showing in the pre. And, okay. That's what it looked like. I footage. sure hope so, because I swear, the, the way they set it up for the first one... I mean, look, that game wasn't Get that the coin, great. turn to Vader! Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it was just dumb. It's like the coins were always in the same spot. As far as I know. In front of what it looked like with this, with the pre-alphas, that I think, depending on how like you accumulate points or um, some sort of experience points towards unlocking that in the in the build. And it uh -huh. might have just been in that build, so you got a chance to play it. I don't know if that'll be how it is when the game ships. But it looks like as you like as the guy I was watching was 
shooting down other fighters and and defending the objectives, he was gaining points. And then okay. when he died, he was able to unlock that. And then can... yeah, that sounds like Battlefield. That's though. cool. Yeah, if they do like Battlefield, I mean, I'm still like gonna buy this game, but I think it's cool. I, I just like that they're listening to fan feedback, and it seems like they're implementing the fan feedback in the right ways. Sometimes games, and I can't think of a specific example now, but it's it seems like they're like, oh yeah, you wanted this, well. We're going to give it to you, but in this weird way that wasn't exactly how you were talking about. This seems like that's they're doing what people wanted. They wanted, you know, ship fighting, and we're getting it, and it looks like we're getting it in the right way. And if there was one game that they didn't have to listen to people because they know they'd buy it anyway, it'd be Star Wars. It'd well, that's probably true. fair. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it doesn't matter what it is. They could have been like, thanks for the feedback, guys. Here's Battlefront 2. Same but, thing as Battlefront 1. Yeah. And people still would have been like, oh, well, I need it. And it's like, okay. But on top of that, with the space battles, and probably, like, it sounds like a much... I, I didn't play the first, the, the reincarnation of Battlefront, because I just heard a lot of bad things about it. I'm like, I'm not going to waste my time. Yeah. Like, I'll wait, see what happens. Um, but also, I know a lot of people, like, it's kind of the same uh, feedback Titanfall got when it came out. It didn't have a single-player campaign. Now you have a single-player single player campaign, which you're going from the side of playing as an Imperial soldier... Which I think a lot of people are like, oh, that's cool. It's like you know, you playing as the bad guy. You playing the bad guy. Yeah. You get to kind of you know, you know, dabble in your your your, in your dark, side. dark side. Yeah. yeah. So I like, I'm really interested in that. That was a big selling point for me. Um, is to well, like really... I, don't, I just don't think that the story is gonna follow like how like um Star Killer did in uh, Force Unleashed, where like you're kind of the good guy, but then like you're actually the bad guy. Like at one point, like, you really become the bad guy, which I oh, thought yeah. was great. But like this game, I feel like this is a story of redemption. You can already tell just from the trailers. It's just like, this person's bad, but they're not really bad inside. You know, it's like yeah. Finn. He's a stormtrooper, yeah. but he just, he's got the heart of a rebel. Heart of gold. <laughs> <laughs> well, J- Javina Gavnikar, whatever her name is, told me to buy it, so I'm going to buy it. Sure, why not? Because yes. I can't say no to her. <laughs> um, Need for Speed Payback. Uh, we talked about it after the E3 episode. This actually looks like they are putting together a pretty decent Need for Speed game because the last couple have not been great. No. Uh, this one, it looks interesting. They've brought, you know, they brought the police cars back, which were gone from a couple of these. They kind of took a page out of the uh, Turn 10 playbook where they had, like, the car on stage where you could see for the first time ever at the presentation. Um, they showed a BMW, it's like a 2018 or 2019 BMW X5. The thing does look sweet, uh, but the gameplay itself looks awesome the visuals are incredible the explosions are great the sl- you know like what they're doing with the art direction i like a lot um you guys need for speed fans at all um i think the last one i played was like like four years ago and i think it was because it was free or something <laughs> they got <laughs> a game with gold might have been on a 360 it was that yeah. long ago yeah. so um i mean it was fun i, I i'm really not in too into racing games um so i just like that this one is it seems like you have there's actually more of a story element to it because in the past it was always like you show up and it's like you know hey a guy texts you with a racing objective and you're just kind of like all right well i guess there's some kind of story here because i'm supposed to do certain things that people are telling me to do in this one it seems like there's actually a coherent story like you you know you come to town there's like some organization going on that they're trying to create mischief in your town and for some reason i don't know way to cure that mischief is to get in your car and race (laughs) yeah race away from but you're me. trying to take these guys out so a lot, a lot of times it's not just like racing them like where it's like oh you got to race this guy right yeah. it, this is like you're speeding through town to go catch this truck from you know delivering something that's going to help the the bad guys so at least they're trying i mean there's only so much you can do with a racing game because obviously you have to race otherwise it wouldn't be a racing game mm-hmm. uh, but i give them credit because it looks like they're trying i played underground and that was it Need for Speed Underground? <laughs> Need for Speed Underground. Man, the, the amount of time I put in the Need for Speed Underground. That game was fantastic. It was. And that was actually one that did not have the police chases. Yeah, it was just And uh, it didn't matter. Sweet. It was like, it was a night racing game, a lot mm-hmm. of it was. And like, the, I remember just looking at like the visuals of like the water on the road and stuff. God, it was impressive. They Holy tried crap. to recreate that magic with Need for Speed Most Wanted, I think it was. And it just didn't have the same charm no. to it at all. But Need for Speed Underground, and I think there was even an Underground, underground 2. 2. Yeah, mm-hmm. That one also did not capture the same magic. No. Um, so then there was this game that EA announced called Fe? Fair? The, Fee. You know what I'm talking about? It's just Fe. F-E. And every mm-hmm. time that they said it, it sounded like they were putting an R onto it, but a very like lazy, subtle R. So well, like, isn't that like, well, isn't that like part of like that whole, like, um, I don't know what you call it, but it's like, uh, oh no, it's... 
fa never mind i'm thinking uh so so la tido that thing <laughs> so, yeah it's not <laughs> fees so la fito no it's not that well, nope. okay. a for effort Boo. <laughs> um oh, well. have you seen this game though no i've actually never heard of it. the art direction in this game looks amazing the visuals that they have i feel like it's in the vein of like an unravel you guys play unravel i know i've it. seen it yeah i've known it too so it's one of those like little those charming little like puzzle games where you know you have like a little character and they're trying to do different things to pass you know a board or a, an obstacle. I believe I can't really figure out what's going on exactly, but there's like some kind of forest creature in this, and he sings with other animals in the forest to solve puzzles. It sounds kind of hokey, but the way that it looks, so it's a Disney movie, yeah, it's kind of <laughs> not that kind of singing. But you you kind of have to check it out because it, it does look impressive, and it's coming to Switch. Well, that's a third party a developing something for Switch. Always a bonus. I'm telling you, man, you give it a year, and Switch is going to see so many like simultaneous releases with everything else. Like they Call might. of Duty is going to come next year, most likely, and then every other game that's like fairly big is going to show up. It, it, could, it could happen. I have a feeling. They're getting Rocket League. Yes, they are, and yeah. they're getting NBA 2K and wrestling. Wow. When's the last time that happened? Not for a long time. Nope. Exactly. And then uh, finally, Battlefield One. Uh, we got to see more from the upcoming DLC. Um, this looks great. I still haven't played Battlefield 1, the actual proper game. Have you played it? Yes, I had it. Um, just couldn't put a lot of time in it, so I, I traded it in. Um, but, I mean, I liked it. I just I didn't have the time to put into it to actually like level up all the different classes mm-hmm. that you have in I'm there. I'm in the same boat. I have this game. I absolutely love this game. I did. I, I loved it. I played it, it, it seven fun. times, probably. <laughs> I'm serious. It's so pathetic. Like it makes me angry it's that hard. I just it gets, don't want to sit down and play it. it but it's I hard love to it. play things. Yeah, it is. It's very tough. So I thought it was interesting that they showed some of the DLC is putting new modes in there, including one where now you're. I mean, Battlefield's thing is like big armies, right? Yes, you have right. big team versus big team. They have a mode which is going to be five on five, which is more reminiscent of Weird. like a Halo or Rainbow Six. Rainbow yeah. Six. Yeah. Is it called like Incursion or something like that? Oh, uh, I don't remember. Incursion mode. It might be something like that. I think there's a lot le- This game has a lot of traction. It can it can really keep going if they want it to. I, th- I think I that that's that they the plan. keep doing it, but they're also doing stuff where I think they're adding perks to characters now. Hmm. Like like selective um, ability upgrades that you can choose that I guess I don't know if you just get them all or if you have to unlock them or whatever. Apparently they existed in 2142, which was the futuristic mech game. Battlefield mech game that was on PC the like character years ago. Reason? Well, the perks thing, I guess, okay. was a part of that. And I think it was in something else. But I don't remember it. I don't remember it, what it was at all. And I played all of them. I just cannot remember what this thing is. Hmm. But I guess they're adding like some more cool stuff. I'm super excited about that. The stuff looked I'm good. I'm not going to play it, but I'm still excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and how can I forget? We got a date for Super Lucky Tale, your most uh, most desired game, Dave. Uh, stop it. <laughs> I will only play that game on 4K on the Xbox One X. I will well, not play that game on any other. If you play that game on your reg- regular Xbox One, you're just a horrible person. Why you, would you ever just? Do you'll that never game get disservice? the density level of the fur, dude. I need to see fur tessellation. All right. <laughs> do you remember back when they re-released Conker's Bad Fur Day yeah. on Xbox, and they everybody was talking about like the fur shading? Do you remember this? I Ugh. don't. Did you ever play Conker? I don't think I did. It well, was originally on the 64, and it was like the one game on Nintendo 64 that had crude humor to it. And how Nintendo, uh, who in Nintendo let that pass, this was probably terminated imme- immediately afterward. <laughs> Um, but and then, then it, a raise when that game became super popular. It was Everyone super still popular. Loves it to this day. And then uh, Xbox purchased Rare from Nintendo, mm-hmm. and then they re-released it. And Rare was talking about the amazing fur shading of Conqueror's fur, and it did look good for the time, whatever. Sure. But people were making the biggest deal out about it. No, it's it, Conqueror. I actually super am looking forward to Super Lucky's Tale. Though. You can look yeah. forward to anything. I want to hear I'm you buy saying, it. I, that's I, what I want I to may, see. You are you do. looking forward to Sims Four coming out? I am Xbox? not. No, no, there's one no. thing he's not looking Is that a thing? To. Is that actually happening? Yes. It is, yes. yes. It yes. only took like nine years yeah, to release November. that game. Xbox and PS4 get it in November. Oh, and God. don't forget about the expansion. What's the expansion that's coming for that? We're getting pets, right? Pets. Oh, pets. wow. That sounds Ooh. exactly like the Xbox 360 games that already exist. Sims 3 <laughs> and Sims 3 Pets. That's the only two you can buy. Yep. There are 30,000 expansions for Sims 4. This has got to be the most cringeworthy moment that I think I saw during the entire Gamescom presentation from anybody was when they brought out this little teeny dog and i forget what its name was do you remember what its name was did you see this i did not see this so this uh, is not it was like jim palm or jiff palm or something like that <laughs> apparently it's like a youtube dog 
I don't know. Wait, is it like this big? Yes. Oh, is it a, and white, it wears it's like, a shirt? It's a little white poodle, right? Uh, it's not a poodle. It's it almost looks like a Pomeranian, but smaller. Yeah. And, a and it's got fluffier. makes weird faces and stuff, and like. <laughs> well, they just had it sitting in a chair, and like the trainer comes out, and they're like, "This is Jif Pom," and the the EA person would be like, "Jif Pom, how are you liking Gamescom?" And the trainer would go, "Sleep," and the dog would go. I'm like, oh, Jif Pump's tired from Gamescom. I'm like, oh, oh my god. Or was that boring? <laughs> I just fell asleep. Holy crap, this sounds terrible. <laughs> oh, it was brutal. I mean, don't get me wrong, the dog was adorable, and I'm sure that's why people watch it on YouTube. But to sit there and tout this thing out in front of a bunch of gamers, I I I don't know. Maybe people who play Sims are super into it and they were excited for the pets thing. Yeah, maybe people that play Sims are also super into watching Gamescom. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> what if your sim character could watch a television and Gamescom was on the television? They'd probably do that. I don't think I follow. Do it's it. so complicated do what it. you just said. I have no <laughs> idea how to follow it. All right. So that's uh, anything else you want to add about Gamescom that you picked up on? Um, the remastering Age of Empires. Okay. Yes. And they're coming out with that. Age of Empires no, no, no. 4. Oh, wait. They're not remastering Age of Empires again. They already did that. Are they reimagining it? No, no, they said they, they said there's going to be like an enhanced, a, rem, a remastered one, two, and three. I thought what? again, what for? But wait, for for a console or for PC? I think it's for PC, and then because it was one, it was it was with the Microsoft okay presser. I heard four and then, was and, coming, and then they're they're they announced four that's in development. That's super exciting. Yeah, but I, th- I, love... I think they're remastering, like updating the graphics, basically. Four, but they one, already two, and three. But they, like they made the game Steam compatible, and they added another expansion, like. 20 years after the game already came out and it's got multiplayer support again and all this stuff I actually rebought it on Steam but the problem hmm. is the game is so slow I can't play it anymore yeah. like you'll be in a map with your friends and like you're playing the PC or your computer or whatever AI and like your dude's up here and like you're down here and he's like hey I'm getting attacked you're like cool I'll be right there and you guys are like like I'm still coming <laughs> and he's like dude I, got, I don't got any buildings left and I'm like I'm working my way up there. And then by the time like you I, get to here, you're like, oh, God, my buildings are being attacked. Now you're like, let's go backward now. And the, by the time you go back, you just everybody's dead and the game's I, over. I remember that from playing because I played a lot of RTS games yeah. like, on PC and console when I was younger. And playing that versus playing like StarCraft or Command oh. & Conquer, it was like, this is taking forever. Well, and, and this is why, like, and I always like to think about how, like, we've been exposed to certain things. Like, you know, where... um. Like, back in the day, like, you could have had a really old computer, right? But at the time, it was fairly new, and it mm-hmm. was blazing fast, right? Right. But then, like, two years later, you're like, this thing is slow. And it's because you were exposed to something faster, right? So now your, your like, internal clock is, like, reset, or your speed clock, or whatever it is, right? And, like, um, it's the same thing with these old games, is that, like, I'm used to fast-paced action, like... I'm building stuff. I mean, I have an army at five minutes in StarCraft Two, following a build order. Whereas in Age of Empires, it's just like, click this and wait for the queue. You guys are <laughs> just coming out, and it creates one spearman at a time. Yeah, and like yeah, right. But like, and then the game, it's it's just so so painstakingly slow. I can't. But no, that's a good good point though on yeah. the age. All right, so to move on then, uh, the thing, other thing, the final thing we got to get it get to in this episode is. The announcement of the Xbox One X Project Scorpio edition. 